today's episode of Let's Talk Drones, I share with you my seven tips for effective flying in and around fireworks displays this summertime. So let's not waste any more time. Let's go boom. Wait, no, that's not it, right? What is it? It's... What's up? It's Chris the Drone Geek and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Drones. Let's Talk Drones is brought to you by The Droning Company, the number one online resource for commercial remote pilots worldwide. Make sure you check them out on YouTube by searching The Droning Company. Lots of great content there on YouTube. Few months away from this yet, but we are going to be at the Commercial UAV Expo in Las Vegas, Nevada this year. So just wanted to ping you on that one. We'll be doing tons of interviews and giving you an inside look at CUAV in the event that you can't be there. Or maybe you are going to go and you just want to recap it with the Droning Company. The number one online resource for commercial remote pilots worldwide. A quick story time, as well as a little bit of a history lesson, too, before we get into those tips. My hometown, Jersey Shore, Pennsylvania, has an annual celebration. This is called our Jersey Shore Town Meeting. And essentially what this celebration is, is it's the town coming together for a fair. And what this fair does is it commemorates the signing of Jersey Shore's very own Declaration of Independence on July 4th, 1776. That's right. They didn't just do it in Philadelphia. We also did it in Jersey Shore too, so go figure. That's what the town meeting's for, so every year around the 4th of July, we have a week-long celebration with carnival rides, games, food, entertainment, you name it, it's a great time. They cap off every year's town meeting with a fireworks display. So for the past three years, I've been flying around the fireworks show, and really for the past two years, I've also been flying through it. The first year back since moving from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, I just sort of flew my drone sort of incognito, kept a safe distance, and just respected the operation itself and got some wide shots of what was going on with the fireworks displays. But after that first year, I thought, you know, I want more. And I just learned how to fly FPV well enough that I felt confident putting my drone in the air for a fireworks display. So I approached the folks that are responsible for the fireworks show, and I asked them, hey, would it be cool if I flew my drone like through the fireworks as you were launching them? And the only question they had for me is, is it cool if your drone get, gets hit by one? And I said, well, I'm going to try my best not to do that. So, yeah, I, I guess I can agree to you guys not being liable in the event that my drone gets hit by a firework. And once we sort of had that squared away, uh, you know, the rest is sort of history at this point. For the past two years, I've been doing some up close and personal flying through the fireworks show here in Jersey Shore, Pennsylvania. Now. Since flying through them, not just around them, I've learned a few things, and I'm here to share some of those tips with you. It's a completely different experience flying around, not just an explosive show, but also flying at night. And if you don't have a lot of experience flying at night and you don't have a lot of experience flying around exploding projectiles, it's gonna be important that you know a few of these tips ahead of time to ensure not just a safe flight operation for the people in the immediate area, but also your drones and the safety of your equipment. And don't worry, no matter if you fly Mavics, Airs, Minis, Phantoms, or you fly FPV quads, there's something on this list for you that's going to make your life easier the next time you decide, or the first time you decide, to fly through fire works. Number one, coordinate with your fireworks personnel teams. Now, I'm going to just make a quick note here. You don't actually need permission from them to fly through or around their fireworks shows. The only scenario where you need to go above and beyond is if there's some sort of a TFR and you're only going to see that really in larger areas like New York City, Boston, Los Angeles, areas like that where they might have a little bit more pull to go out and get a TFR to restrict drone operations in and around their fireworks displays. But in small town scenarios like the one I find myself in, you don't actually need to coordinate with those fireworks teams. It's just something I would recommend. You're not asking for permission to fly. What you're asking for is permission to be included in the operation to ensure safety for not just your drones, but the people that are enjoying the fireworks as well as the personnel that are launching the fireworks. It's a win-win for everybody involved because the teams that are launching the fireworks know about your drone in the airspace. They acknowledge that that's not a threat. It's not something that they're unaware of, and there's no reason to panic or be alarmed. They know you're going to be there. They know you're going to be flying your drone. And on your side of things, not also getting inside 
inside information that will help you to determine the best flight paths and the way to fly to collect the most engaging and compelling multimedia of the fireworks display. So again, win-win all the way around. Make sure you reach out to whoever it is that's responsible for planning and executing your local fireworks displays this summer. Make sure that they're aware that you're going to be flying and let them know that you're willing to work with them and maybe even, you know, donate the footage to them so that they can use it to hype up the event year over year. It's always good to create relationships and to foster a community around your drone piloting. It'll give everybody a better feeling about you flying your drone, especially in situations like a fireworks show where it's a little bit more complex than just flying on a regular Tuesday. Number two, develop a launch and landing runway. This one is crucial. Get there before the sun goes down so you have plenty of light and identify all of the obstacles and objects in the area of the launch zone for the fireworks show. This will allow you to assess potential risks to your drone, make notes of those things, and establish a channel and a flow for the air traffic. This is especially important if you have multiple pilots because you're going to need to be coordinating with one another. Hey, I'm in the air. Okay, I'm landing. Things like that are going to be going on, and sometimes when that type of communication is going on and you're trying to avoid other drones, you sometimes lose sight of the obstacles such as telephone wires, antenna, buildings, trees, and it's important that you make notes of that and that you have a mental image of what it looked like when it was well lit so that you can take that information and sort of reference it when you're in a low light scenario. Super important that you get there a little bit ahead of time. Like I said, before the sun goes down, when you have plenty of light so you can identify those potential risks and make sure you establish a flight pattern and launching and landing runways that allow you to safely launch and land your drone. Number three, properly equip your drones. When it comes to staying compliant with the FAA, there are two pieces of equipment that we need to make sure that our flights are kosher. The first one has to do with the fact that we're flying at night. We will need anti-collision lighting that is visible for up to three statute miles. So you're going to need this to be able to strobe as well. You'll need to have that attached to your drone and on during the entire course of your flight. When you land the drone, you can turn it off, swap out batteries, swap out lights, whatever you need to do. When your drone is in the air and it's after dark in low light conditions, you need to have that anti-collision lighting on and flashing so that other aircraft in the airspace, whether it's manned or unmanned, can see it and navigate around it. The second piece of equipment that you're going to need to stay FAA compliant is remote ID. I know this is a touchy subject and there are a lot of you out there that are pushing against it and I get it, believe me, I get it. But to stay compliant with FAA reg, especially when you're working with potentially police, fire departments, people that might know people that could potentially report you to the FAA and cause a lot of trouble and a lot of headache for you, you want to make sure that you're compliant and that you're following the rules to a T. So I highly recommend that you either fly a drone that has native remote ID built in and can broadcast out without an external module, or if you're flying FPV, more likely than not, you're not going to be able to broadcast remote ID internally from the drone, so you're going to need an external module that is able to do it for you. Make sure you've got some sort of remote ID broadcasting device active and on during your flight so that people that need to know or people that want to know can look up your drone, see where it's at in the airspace, and see that you are flying right next to the fireworks show so they know that it's more legit than anything because you're right next to all of the personnel that are launching the fireworks. It's dumb, I know. And while those two components are the required pieces of equipment for flying your drone during a fireworks display, you may find other pieces of equipment are helpful as well. One thing that I really enjoyed using was the LED strips on my Pavo 20 while flying in low light conditions. It's not FAA compliant in that it doesn't replace anti-collision lighting, but what it does do is it adds another layer of visibility to the drone. So I can fly it out a little further having that very bright LED light strip around the outside of the drone. It's really bright blue and it's hard to miss and almost most any circumstance, especially in low light where it contrasts so well off of a dark background, it was so helpful and made flying it so much easier. Number four, utilize beacon lights for easy orientation. Now this goes for all pilots. This is not exclusive to your RTFs or your FPVs. You're all going to get benefit from this. Let's start with those RTF pilots though. When it comes to beacon lights, you're not really going to need to use them to orient the drone in terms of whether it's right side up or upside down, but what you will need is you'll need those beacon lights to make sure that you're staying in a designated flight path, 
Make sure that you understand where the drone's at in the airspace and which direction the drone is headed. And it also makes it a little bit easier to know where you need to go to land the drone when you get to the bottom of your battery. When it comes to FPV pilots, I'm going to level with you here. You're going to love having beacon lights set up because as you're doing your acro stunts, you're doing barrel rolls, you're doing power loops, you're doing a variety of different stunts in, around, and through the fireworks display, it is difficult when it's very, very dark to stay correctly oriented, meaning your drone's not falling out of the sky because it's upside down. So what you're gonna wanna do is set up some beacon lights, and that's what I did. I had a GVM studio light for my YouTube setup. In fact, I have one sitting right here. This is the actual light that I used. And I just cranked that thing up to the highest brightness level that it possibly had. I think it's 99. And I made sure that the light was bright white so it was easy to distinguish from external lighting on the buildings around the area. While I only had one light i will say it was super helpful when it came to setting up my drones because i had plenty of light in the area that would have otherwise been dark but it was also super helpful as i was flying the drone i could reference that light and where it was at and i'd know what orientation my drone was at was it off level when it comes to rolling was it off level when it comes to pitching and how do i correct myself that light was super helpful it also gave me a beacon to return home to so that i could safely land in the area that i was in it made my flights safer when it comes to landing it also made my flights more efficient meaning i could get the drone down and land it and swap batteries out and get it back in the air in a very timely fashion so go out it doesn't have to be anything special it doesn't have to be a gvm studio light just get a light that is bright enough and effective enough to serve as a beacon that you can reference throughout the duration of your flight number five understand wind speed and direction and how it affects the trajectory of the fireworks being launched this is going to be super crucial to safe operations not only only is it going to keep the people around the area safe it's also going to keep your drone safe if you understand what direction the wind is blowing and how hard it's blowing it can help you to understand which direction the fireworks are going to tend to lean once they get up in the air because after they leave the projectile system that launches them into the air it's up to the aerodynamics and the wind speed as to where the actual firework the explosive goes before it finally pops Understanding the strength of the wind as well as the direction in which it is blowing will also help to assist the fireworks teams. Now this year, I actually had them come to me. I pulled up my UAV forecast app and I was able to tell them the wind speed and the direction the wind was blowing and that helped them to determine how they needed to orient the tubes that they launched the fireworks out of. They were super appreciative of it and quite frankly, it helped everybody be on the same page as to where the fireworks were gonna blow over to. Now we didn't have a really strong wind this year during the fireworks, so it was sort of a non-factor, but there was a slight breeze and it did push some of the fireworks in a particular direction i think it was to the northeast in that particular scenario so super important that you have knowledge of that and it's also helpful if you provide that knowledge to the people you're working with the fireworks personnel number six establish a well-lit landing zone you will thank yourself for doing this ahead of time now i had my beacon light which also served as somewhat of a floodlight and created a well-lit area for me to land the drone in during the flight's around the fireworks display, but I also established a secondary landing zone around the high school that was adjacent to the launch zone. It had plenty of exterior lighting and wide open sidewalks that I was able to land on. So it gave me quite a few options when it comes to landing the drone safely. It's important that you establish at least one well-lit landing zone, but if you have a second one, that doesn't hurt either. And number seven, use a visual observer. Yes, that goes for you Mavic, Phantom, Air, Mini pilots as well. When you're flying in low light conditions, it does take away some of your awareness when it comes to what's going on in the airspace around you. It's harder to see, and with that decreased visibility comes increased risk. That's just a fact of life. So having somebody there, either one other person or maybe an additional person or even a third person that can serve as another set of eyes and help you to safely conduct your flight operation is super helpful. I had droning company FPV expert as well as friend of the channel, Sam Carp there with me. He was doing some flying. We were going back and forth on that. I'd let him fly, he'd let me fly. And then whoever wasn't flying was acting as the visual observer throughout the flight so that we could safely navigate the airspace both around the fireworks display as well as around obstacles and other objects that might potentially cause harm to the drone or people in the immediate area in the event of a crash. 
I highly recommend you have at least one other person there with you when you're operating around a fireworks display, especially if you're getting up into the display and you're flying your drone through it. It's super important that you have added visibility and you understand what's going on, not just in the airspace, but with your drone as well, because there may be circumstances where a visual observer could notice something going on with your drone that you might not notice while you're flying it. Use a visual observer and thank me later. Now that we've gone over all of that and I've shared my seven tips, I wanted to end the video by sharing with you the results of my flight through the fireworks at the Jersey Shore Town Meeting 2024. If you like this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up icon down below. Helps me out a lot. Helps get this video out into the algorithm to more viewers like yourself. If you love drone content made by drones, about drones, and for drone pilots, this is the channel for you. Make sure you get subscribed if you haven't already and hit that bell icon. You'll get a notification every time I post a new video. Until next time, I'm Chris the Drone Geek, and I'm out of here. Enjoy some fireworks.